Hey guys, welcome to what is hopefully the last of the online 517s, and it's the end of our uh, Fruits of the Spirit study. So uh, in just one week, we will be gathering back in person for our Halloween party on October 24th. We'll be meeting here at church right outside the starting line. We'll have lots of fun and games and food, um, music. Hope you can all come. Uh, costumes are encouraged. There will be a prize for the for the best costume based on all the votes so we'll have a little voting box where people can vote on on the best costume um don't vote for yourself that's just kind of weird unless you're actually running for office then vote for yourself someday but um so here we are last of the uh fruits of the spirit and as we have always been starting out we are going to eat a strange fruit or i'm going to eat a strange fruit y'all can try it sometime if you want to but uh this one is extra strange uh, this is a passion fruit, and I have never, ever eaten one of these. Uh, I didn't even eat it before I started talking to you guys today. Um, honestly, this is the one that I am least excited about eating. That is some weird stuff in there, and um, honestly, kind of looks like throw. But um, we're going to give it a try. These are native to Brazil, uh, Paraguay, parts of Argentina. But since then, um, their discovery, they have been... Uh, cultivated all over the world, even in parts of America and Arizona. So uh, here we go. Let's give this weird fruit pudding a try. If I can actually scoop it out. Man, 
That's actually kind of awesome. It's a, it's a lot like grapefruit, but not as bitter. A little crunchy with those seeds. You can eat the seeds. Not bad at all. Um, might be the best one we've had the whole time. I encourage you to go get one yourself. Uh, they are kind of hard to cut, but so get a real sharp knife. Uh, I got mine at Publix over by the apples. So check it out. Uh, actually pretty delicious. Uh, encourage you to do that. So uh, let's pray before we get into our scripture and, uh, and study for today. God, thank you for your love and bringing us together today. Thank you that um, we now have some light at the end of the tunnel of um, coming back together in person. The way, you know, church is really meant to be with face-to-face -face interactions and relationships and growing together uh, with you and, and for you and just more in love with you. God, I pray that you uh, just speak now as, as we uh, study this word together. In your son, Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, the, the way we've been studying this, we've been doing the SOAP Bible study method. And uh, we start out with the scripture, some observations about the scripture, apply it to our lives, and then we pray about it, that it will be real in our lives going forward. So let's start out with uh, Galatians, uh, our, our base scripture, Galatians 5, 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, before we get into another scripture I want to talk about, about this specific thing, I think it's really important that we talk about what the biblical definition, at least in my study Bible, is of our last fruit of the Spirit, which is self-control. So self-control is said to be victory over sinful desires. So with that, I, I got to asking myself, you know, what did Jesus do about temptation? Um, which temptation ultimately lead us into sin, and for us being human beings, temptation is the sinful desire, and then engaging in the sin is the sin. So what, what did Jesus do about um, being tempted with sinful desire? And uh, very early in, in, in the gospel, in the very first gospel, in the gospel of Matthew, before Jesus starts his ministry, before he's baptized, he is alone in the wilderness for 40 days, and a, uh, a visitor comes to, to see him. And uh, it's not the visitor anybody wants to come visit, but here he is. Uh, he's encountered with the devil. And so we're going to read Matthew 4, 1 through 11, and find out what did Jesus do when he was um, confronted with temptation. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him to the holy city, and he had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, and he's talking about the Bible here, the devil is quoting the Bible. He says, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in, the, in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now Jesus responds just like he did before with scripture to the devil, telling him, hey, that's, that's wrong. He says, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendors. All this I will give to you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, again, combating the devil with scripture, he says, away from me, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. So, what's the answer to the question? What did Jesus do when faced with temptation, when faced with sinful desires? How did he have self-control? The answer is really simple. He responded with Scripture. He responded with the Word of God. 
He responded in, in knowing the word of God because he had had such a strong relationship with God himself. God being his actual father, Jesus was able to respond to the devil saying, none of that is true. Like, yes, um, I could throw myself off, off this, this mountain, this building, and the angels would come tend to me, but that's, that's me doing it on purpose. If, if Jesus was to just fall, then yeah, the angels would catch him, and it wouldn't be um, Jesus sinning. Um, also, you know, he wasn't going to eat. Um, he was going to eat bread that he turned in, into. He's gonna, he wasn't going to eat stones that he turned into bread because he knew that the scripture said you can't live on bread alone, and he wasn't going to do what the devil was telling him to do. So, so Jesus combated every bit of attempted temptation because Jesus really wasn't tempted because he was perfect every attempted temptation with scripture and and he knew it so well because he had such a strong relationship that he was so in love with God the Father that that was so strong that it was just instantaneous he was ready for it so so yeah that's that's the why here why why did Jesus respond that way it's because of that strong relationship. So how do we apply this to us? Well, now we know what did Jesus do. So now we know what would Jesus do. Like the old bracelets that said, what would Jesus do? Um, you know, he would, he would respond to any temptation by relying on his relationship with God, by re relying on his faith. And I believe that's what we're all challenged to do. We're all challenged to, to respond to temptation with, with strong faith, with strong um, foundations in Scripture, strong foundations in prayer, strong foundations in being in Christian community. So if you're not there, or maybe you are there in some way, and you, you have the sin that you're struggling with. I don't know what it could be. Everybody's got any variety of sins that they struggle with. And, and living in this world in 2021, um, with everything at our fingertips and every, anything we ever want at any time being accessible, sin is just on buffet for the whole world. So we're all struggling with something there, we're, or we all have struggled with something there. And the first step to get victory over your sinful desires is to pray for forgiveness. And then the next step is to surrender and fall more in love with God. So you pray for forgiveness, Jesus has forgiven you, and, and then you just work on falling more in love with God. Surrender your life to him, call him Lord of your life, and, and have a relationship with him, and make it strong, and work on it every single day. Uh, a really, really great example of that happening is in 2 Corinthians 12. Um, even Paul, Paul who wrote most of the New Testament, struggled with his sin and he struggled with with this thing that um he describes as his thorn a thorn in his flesh that that um says three times he was tempted and so here uh in uh second corinthians 12 i'm gonna read a little bit for you first uh, second corinthians 12 verses 1 through 10 says i must i must go on boasting although there is nothing to be gained i will go on to visions and revelations from the lord I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught, up in, to, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in body or out of body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in body or, or, or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weakness. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would not be speaking the truth because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say or because of these surpassing great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, this is Jesus, this is red words in the red letter Bible. It says, Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. 
That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So, if we are fully surrendered to Christ, then we give all our weaknesses to him. We, we, we use him as our source of strength. We rely on Jesus as our source of strength to get through every bit of weaknesses, to overcome every bit of sinful desire. And we do that by falling more and more in love with God. And so how do you do that? How do you fall more in love with God? Well, first step is, is these two things. Pray for forgiveness and surrender. Surrender your life to Christ. And then every single day, eagerly strive to have a strong prayer life. Spend as much time in prayer as you possibly can with God. Spend as much time in the Word as you possibly can. Pick, you know, pick a book and, and start reading. I encourage you, if you've never started reading the Bible, start with the book of John, then go to the book of Romans. And, and study that. And go through it slowly. Fully, you know, start asking yourself these questions. You know, what do you see? How does this apply to me? Pray about it. And surround yourself with, with people that are praying for you. Pray for others. Pray for your pray for your own life and just spend intentional time praying to God. And then lastly, surround yourself with other believers. Um, that doesn't mean that that you can't have friends that that don't know Jesus, because how else would we grow the kingdom if we weren't sharing God's, uh, you know, sharing Christ with, with our friends who don't know Jesus? We need to do that. But the amount of friends that you have that do have a relationship with Christ need to greatly outnumber the ones of friends that you don't. So I encourage you all to do those things. Uh, let's pray. And then we've got our trivia question for the uh, Chick-fil-A gift card. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for this amazing word that speaks to our hearts, that you will challenge us to live for you, that we will fully surrender ourselves to you. And God, we ask now for the forgiveness of all our sins. Uh, we ask that you just draw us near to you, uh, draw us to your word, draw us to time and prayer with you so that we may fall more in love with you and that when the, the arrows of temptation come, that we will be strong and grounded in the faith that is just fully in love with you. Your son, Jesus' name, amen. So trivia question today. Um, there are believed to be two Johns in the Bible that, that wrote, uh, wrote books of the Bible. Um, there's John who wrote, John the, there's John the Apostle who wrote uh, the, the Gospel of John, uh, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. But then there's the other John who wrote Revelation. It's largely believed that they're two different Johns. Uh, what was he called? He was John of this place. So let me know, and you'll be in the drawing to win that Chick-fil-A gift card. Look forward to seeing you all on October 24th, right outside this building, uh, 517. Hope to see you there. Love you all.